goes to the decomposer. Okay, so that means whenever a consumer eats another organism, it is not only taking up the food, it is a food which is storing the energy. Okay, energy is stored in the form of food. Now in the food chain, food chain can be defined as series of events where one organism eats another to get the energy. So why we need food? We are all, we need to survive. So for our survival, for our growth, for our development, we require energy. So we eat food to get the energy. So therefore, energy is stored in the food. Now here also, every organism is feeding on the another organism to obtain the energy. Therefore, they can survive, okay? So here, this is the example of a figure where grass, so the insects are feeding on the grass and this frog is feeding on insect. Owl is feeding on frog. And hawk is feeding on owl. That means one organism is feeding on another organism to obtain the energy. So now the energy is flowed from grass, grass to insect, insect to frog, frog to owl, and finally hawk. Okay, this is how the energy flow takes place in the food chain. Now here we have some sample food chains. So in the last class, we have discussed some, we have different ecosystems, means terrestrial eco ecosystems, aquatic ecosystems, and then low tick, lentic, marine. Okay, all these we have discussed, freshwater ecosystem. Now here we are looking into some three different ecosystems where how the food chains are working. For example, in the grassland biome. So in the grassland ecosystem, in other terms, grass is acting as a primary producer. So that means the grass is utilizing the sunlight to produce the food. Now grasshoppers or any other insects are feeding on the grass. Now these grasshoppers are the primary consumers. And rat and other small animals or, or frog, they are secondary consumers, which are feeding on the primary consumers. Now, snake, which is feeding on the rat, they are tertiary consumers. And finally, the quaternary consumer is hawk, which is feeding on the snake. Okay, this is the scenario in grassland. When come to pond, Okay, there you don't see plants or grass. There you see algae. Algae is also, which is green in color, they uh, perform photosynthesis to produce food or chemical energy. Now here the algae is primary producer and mosquito larva, this feeds on algae. So that's why we say you should not keep stagnant water uh, like uh, to prevent uh, mosquito um, mediated diseases like malaria, typhoid, all these things. So this is because they feed on, whenever we have stagnant water, algae will grow. Whenever the algae comes, mosquito larvae will grow, which are primary consumers, which feed on algae. Now, to feed on mosquito larvae, dragonfly larva will come. So that is secondary consumer. Now this larva is uh, eaten up by fish, which is tertiary consumer. Now, some large animals like raccoons, they feed on these tertiary consumers like fish. So now raccoons are the quaternary consumers, okay? Then this is in pond. Now when we see ocean, which is marine ecosystem, it is completely different. So in ocean, we see the producers are phytoplanktons. They are plants which are seen in ocean. Then they are now the primary producers. And zooplanktons will feed on phytoplanktons. And fish, they feed on zooplankton. 
seal, which are the animals which we see in along with polar bears in uh, very cold regions. So this seal will feed on fish and white sharks, they feed on seal. So that means this kind of um, arrangement is seen in ocean ecosystem. So these are uh, different food chains, for example, okay? Now, how the energy is flown? Now, whatever we have seen, it is food, okay? Which animal is feeding on what? That is only food. Now, how the energy is flowing and how much amount of energy is lost? So that is represented. Now, here in the red color, whatever the red color which is represented, that is the energy flowing through the system. In blue color is the heat energy lost from the system. So here in the producers, there is no energy flowing. Oh, totally the energy is fixed by the producers from the solar energy. And from producers, some amount of energy is transferred to the primary consumers and some amount of energy is lost as heat. So you can see a red, red region and blue region. Then when it comes to the secondary consumers, lot of amount of energy is lost and some amount of heat is, uh, sorry, lot uh, 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 energy is transferred to the secondary consumers from primary consumer and some amount of heat energy is lost. And in tertiary consumers, also energy is transferred from secondary consumers and some amount of heat energy is lost from the system. Now next comes food web. So that is food chain. So food web is nothing but it is an interconnected overlapping food chains. So here that means in food chain so far whatever we have discussed it is nothing but one organism uh, on producer primary consumer is feeding then secondary consumer is feeding on primary consumer tertiary consumer is feeding on secondary consumer. That means it is like one to one point. But in food web, it is like a net, okay, interconnected, okay. So here, this is the example you can see. This is an oak tree. So on this tree, what are feeding like mouse is feeding on this tree. Now this mouse is eaten up by snake and also eagle or hawk. Then this bird, another like on trees only, there are some birds also. Even the birds are eaten up by the snake and this hawk. And this bird eats insects, which are again present on the trees. Finally, even it is a mouse or snake or hawk or tree, whatever it is, when it is dead, the decomposers like bacteria or fungi, they will break down or decompose them and they will break down into minerals. And finally, that is transferred back into the soil. And again, from soil, the trees will take up the nutrients. And again, they are fed by the secondary, primary consumers, secondary consumers like so that means here, not a single type of food chain. Okay, it is not just grassland or not just aquatic or like that. So here it is an interconnected food chain or overlapping food chain. Therefore, it is called as food web. Okay. So this is another way of representation. So here on grass, you can see multiple organisms which are dependent on grass and trees and multiple consumers are eating these primary consumers, okay? So again, the energy is transferred back into the nature. Now next is ecological pyramids. Ecological pyramid is nothing but, it is a representation to show how the energy is flowing through the ecosystem. So it is not only the energy you have 
based on numbers then productivity all this also but primarily first we will discuss about the energy flow so this is the energy pyramid so here it is in this pyramid it is showing that how much amount of energy is moving from one feeding level to the another feeding level that means from prime producers to primary consumers then primary consumers to secondary consumers and finally to decomposers how much amount of energy is transferred so here you can see for example if sunlight is having 10 lakh joules of energy the trees or plants or producers they are utilizing only 10000 joules so very little proportion of energy is utilized by this producers then from these plants or trees or producers the insects which are feeding on them they utilize only 1000 joules and then secondary consumers which are feeding on primary consumers they utilize only 100 joules and finally the tertiary consumers they they gain only 10 joules so that means the energy which is transferring from one level to another level it is only 10% of the energy which is passed okay and here most energy is available at the producer level of the pyramid that is at the bottom of the pyramid and then it will move on to the top when finally it reaches the top the energy level is very very less so here you can see in this diagram so here the producers are plants so the energy level is very high in at the bottom producer level then when come to first level consumers it is still reduced then in second level consumer still reduced then final in the third level consumer it is very very less or negligible very less okay when compared to the producers now we will discuss about some other food chains also so the same thing like flow of energy in an ecosystem is represented in the form of food chain okay so yeah so this food chain is usually represented in the form of tropic levels so here we have tropic levels here are producers consumers decomposers in consumers again primary secondary tertiary and quaternary consumers so the types of food chains so previously now whatever we have discussed it is grazing food chain that means grassland food chain where grass is the producer then grass hopper is primary consumer then birds are secondary consumers and falcon are the tertiary consumer this is one example so this is how it is represented then next is detritus food chain so detritus is nothing but a waste matter okay so the decaying animals and plant bodies are utilized by this microorganisms and then finally the detriting detritus feeding organism and predators so the detritus is the waste material which is obtained by this dead plants and animals so this is mainly depending on the organic matter produced in the another system that means this or uh, this animal or plant it has produced some organic matter so that is utilized in this food chain so in this food chain we see algae some bacteria fungi protozoa insects nematodes all these participate in this food chain so here from the sunlight various animals and plants they obtain organic matter and after they are dead so that organic matter is utilized by bacteria then milliped which is also called detrivore under aerobic respiration finally from this organic matter various inorganic nutrients are obtained okay that 
means the energy now from sunlight is converted to inorganic nutrients okay in this detritus food chain so what is the significance of the food chain is why we need to understand the food chain it will tell you the it will give the understanding of feeding relationship as well as the interaction between organism and ecosystem so we will know like feeding relationship is nothing but how one organism is feeding on the another organism and how these organisms are interacting with the ecosystem okay so what is ecosystem all this we have discussed biotic and abiotic factors so in the biotic factors how the organisms are interacting with the abiotic factors so that is what we can understand by learning the food chain and it also helps in understanding the mechanism of energy flow and circulation of matter so how this energy is flowing from one organism to another and how the matter here there are two aspects one is energy and another is matter that is food so both these how they are moving so that we can understand along with that very important thing is it, we can understand the movement of toxic substances and the problem associated with biological magnification so it is nothing but at every stage there is a chance of accumulation of toxic material in this ecosystem so that also we can uh, determine or we can understand if we know like what is the what are the levels suppose if we know plants okay from plants to how the energy is transferred to the next level then we can we can understand like where this toxic material is getting accumulated again i will discuss this in detail so as i said food webs food webs are nothing but the interconnected tropical levels by which we can understand the feeding connections among between the organisms so here when we represent the food web we usually place nodes node is nothing but like a dot now every node represent a species or a group of related species or different stages of a single species okay now between two nodes we draw a line okay that is the link which is connecting so this is always goes to prey to predator so prey means the animal which is eaten up by the predator and the predator which eats the um, other organism now from prey to predator the angle will go arrow okay and the lowest tropic level is called basal species and the highest tropic level is called as top predator so the basal species are always the producers and the top predators the highest tro uh, tropic level is predators or tertiary consumers now this food webs can be represented in the three forms one is tropical uh, sorry topological webs that means these food webs they indicate only the feeding relationship means in in that kind of uh, food web only we can see like which organism is feeding on which organism only that information we can get but in flow webs we can know the energy also how much amount of energy is transferred and uh, how the uh, like energy is transferred from one tropic level to another tropic level and how the feeding interaction also we can study in flow webs then interaction web in interaction web we can see how one group influences the another group how the interactions are taking place so this three types of representations are possible in food web so now we will discuss about different food webs we have soil food web aquatic food web food web in forest grassland terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem first is the soil food web so in plant shoots and roots first of all the plant is taken up the energy from sunlight and they will fix this energy in the shoot and root within these shoots and roots we have nematodes 
then fungi and in the soil we have some organic matter and this is and some bacteria also is present in the soil now these nematodes are taken up by arthropods and bacteria is taken up by protozoans and nematodes also other nematodes finally these arthropods are eaten up by the birds and nematodes are eaten up by animals and this bacteria is eaten up by earthworms and earthworms are again eaten up by animals so that means now every organism is dependent on another organism okay this is how the uh, food web representation in soil okay then next is aquatic food web so this is in water so here as i said phytoplankton so they are the plants which are present in the ocean so as the sunlight cannot penetrate through the bottom of the ocean these phytoplankton usually grow in the top surface of the ocean so they will perform photosynthesis and they will produce the matter carbohydrate and now the zooplankton or the animals small animals they will feed on this and finally these zooplankton are eaten up by fish then fish is eaten up by seals and then seals are further eaten up by sharks okay and whatever the organic deposits which are which are penetrated deep into the which are sedimented in the bottom of the ocean they are used by some other crabs or like that these crabs are again eaten up by fish so like that it goes on then in forest in forest also so the green plant acts as a producer and on this green plant we have goat rabbit and mouse which are feeding and from this goat or rabbit they are eaten up by this um uh, like goat is eaten up by jackal and rabbit is eaten up by wild cat and mouse is eaten up by owl then this mouse mouse is also eaten up by snake then finally lion or kite so they will eat these animals so this is how the food web is represented in the forest the next is grassland food web so in the grassland already we have discussed like uh, these uh, musk grass grasshoppers and mouse they feed on grass then rabbit also feeds on grass then lizards they eat these insects snake eats mouse and finally all are eaten up by hawk so this is grassland food web now if we see terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem here when we are studying we simply study it as individual terrestrial and aquatic but in nature they are all interconnected so for example these insects they feed on grass and frogs eat insects in the same way the frogs eat fish which is present on in aquatic ecosystem okay that means now frog is eating both insects which is present in terrestrial ecosystem and fish which are present in aquatic ecosystem and this frog is eaten up by snake as well as crane which is present in the water so finally all are eaten up by the hawk so this is how the interconnection between the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem takes place so this is a food food web which is connected okay so what is the significance of the food web <clears throat> so it is not only to know the food sources but here to know the importance of animal relationship so how these animals are related okay and also it is to understand that plants are the foundation of all ecosystem and life is dependent on plant not only for food but energy and also for oxygen okay and food web it provides the stability to the ecosystem okay 
then tropic levels so what are tropic levels they are the feeding positions that biotic so the biotic components occupy in the food chain so if we see food chain we have different tropic levels so where the biotic system or organisms are present in this food chain that levels are called as tropic levels this word tropic has derived from the greek word which is trophe means food or feeding this tell you like one how one organism is feeding on another organism what is the relationship okay so we have five tropic levels tropic level 1 2 3 4 and 5 in tropic level 1 we have primary producers in tropical level 2 we have herbivores or primary consumers tropic level 3 predators carnivores they are secondary consumers then tropic level 4 we have carnivores which are also called tertiary consumers and in tropic level 5 we have apex predators that means these animals are not are birds which are not eaten up by the other animals okay so this is the path through which the energy flows in the form of food so it's the same thing in the first tropic level we have producers which are called autotrophs that they are plants or algae which produce their own food through photosynthesis in this way they fix the energy which is obtained from the sunlight in the form of food okay an exception is there that is the deep sea hydrothermal ecosystems where there is no sunlight the primary producers manufacture food through a process called chemosynthesis here there is no photosynthesis but a process called chemosynthesis okay then consumers so consumers cannot prepare their own food hence they are called heterotrophs they feed on other organisms usually animals but only primary consumers they feed on plants and they can be either herbivores carnivores or omnivores omnivores means both carnivores and herbivores then decomposers decomposers also called detritivores which break down the animal or plant material which is dead and also waste which is released and which is converted back to the energy and nutrients and recycled in the ecosystem now these decomposers such as bacteria and fungi fungi means here mushroom they feed on wa waste and dead matter okay they will be recycled back into the nature so in real world there is no more than one food chain for most organism okay because only one type of predator it is eaten up by only one type of predator and if we see the diagram that is why it is called as food web in food chain we know only a single point like only one producer one primary consumer one secondary consumer like that we can see but in food web the same organism is eaten up by different other organisms okay so therefore multiple food chains are interconnected to form food web so the same thing in the first tropic level you can see phytoplanktons and plants algae which produces the food in the second tropical level you have primary consumers third tropic level you have secondary consumers and in fourth tropic level you have tertiary consumers like golden eagles and foxes now we discuss about ecological pyramids so only till now we have discussed only energy pyramid we have other pyramids also so these ecological pyramids are graphical representation of the tropic structure so this is nothing but the based on the feeding positions we will draw a pyramid so pyramids of number so so far we have discussed about pyramids of energy now here it is pyramid of numbers so it is a graphic representation of number of individuals per unit area at various tropic level so that means at each tropic level how many number of organisms are present 
So usually if we see in producers, which are present at the base of the ecosystem or pyramid, they are large in number. When it comes to the top, carnivores, they will be less in number. Because for example, if we see you have some thousands of plants, there will be only small number of primary consumers which are feeding on the plants. Then there are still less number of secondary consumers feeding on primary consumers. And finally, the tertiary consumers will be very, very less in number. So based on the number of individuals or organisms present at each tropic level, so usually we get the normal pyramid. That means the base is wide and when you come to the tip of the pyramid, it is narrow. But when it comes to the parasites, it is inverted. Why? Because if you see trees, suppose you have some thousand trees, then the birds which are feeding on those trees or which are living on the trees are much larger than the number of trees. And those parasites which are feeding on the birds, they will be still larger in number. Then hyperparasites which are living with these parasites, they will be very, very large in number. Hence, it is inverted pyramid. Then come to spindle-shaped pyramid. When it is, uh, when we are uh, uh, like representing the carnivore and herbivore and producer relationship. Because as we see the number of trees, when compared to the number of trees, the birds population will be more. But when we see uh, carnivores, which are feeding on the birds, they will be very, very less. Okay. Then you get a very a, a spindle shaped pyramid when we plot this kind of relationship. Okay. Now, what is the advantage and disadvantage of the pyramid of numbers? So advantages are nothing but simply by looking at that pyramid, you can tell in which tropic level you have large number of organisms. And we can also easily compare the changes in the ecosystem. But the disadvantages, we cannot say like which species, how many uh, organisms are present in each species. And we don't consider whether the birds are juvenile or immature form. Okay, we don't know each and everything. We simply assume all are adults and they all belong to the same species, but that is not the correct. This is misleading information. Then pyramid of biomass. So here the biomass or the food which is produced at each tropic level, that is uh, represented in this pyramid of biomass. So this biomass is calculated as the mass of each individual into number of individual at the tropic level. So it is the weight, okay? How many organisms are there and what is the weight of each organism? Here, if you see in the terrestrial ecosystem, we see it is a pyramid is upright. That means the number of plants are more, trees are more, and the trees are heavy in size also, maybe thousand kgs. Then herbivores will be less in weight. They'll have only 100 kgs. Then primary carnivores or secondary consumers will be still less, only 10 kgs. Then the top carnivore will be only one kg. That means the weight is reduced gradually, hence it is upright. But when we see in the aquatic ecosystem, it is inverted. Why is it so? Because the producers are small in number. Uh, sorry, they are large in number, but the size is small, hence the weight is less. And the herbivores or fishes, they will be large when compared to the producers, hence their weight will be more. And finally, the carnivores like sharks, whales, they'll be very, very high in their weight, hence they will be, um, the width of the pyramid will be very broader at the top. Hence, it is inverted pyramid in the aquatic ecosystem. Now, what is the advantage and disadvantage of pyramid of biomass is? 
it overcomes the pyramids of number so we can know like which species are present and what is the weight number everything disadvantage is but we don't know like we don't know the weight of each individual okay overall we can measure and this also is influenced by the seasons sometimes like in rainy season we see a plenty of fish in the water but same in the summer season that may decrease so seasonal variations so they may change the uh, whatever the information and not all organisms are same size or they are, may not have the same energy content so these are some of the disadvantages then next is pyramid of productivity so here how much amount of energy is fixed in a particular time period that means how much amount of solar energy is utilized that is represented in the pyramid of productivity so this also we have already discussed so we have lots of energy from the sunlight which is taken up by the plants but only plants can take up only small amount of energy it cannot take the entire energy from the sunlight so from plant when come to primary consumers it is still reduced then secondary consumer then to tertiary consumer it is almost um, significantly reduced in the form of in, in terms of productivity okay so this is the pyramid of productivity so the advantage is there is no inverted pyramids you cannot see because the ultimate source of energy that is sunlight is having the highest energy and you can show how much amount of energy is transferred actually and we can also compare different ecosystems and how much energy is transferred in each ecosystem but the disadvantages are it is very difficult to collect the energy data okay and the problems which are occurring in assigning a species to a particular tropic level is difficult now so so far we have discussed various ecosystems then uh, what are the tropic levels then everything we have discussed now what are the problems which are there in the ecosystem so there are three main problems one is bioaccumulation biomagnification and extinction of species first is bioaccumulation it is nothing but during plants during like nowadays due to industrialization and all these things we are releasing the chemical base and toxins into the nature okay our water bodies so these are getting accumulated in the plants and animals so there that kind of accumulation is called as bioaccumulation after certain level they can become very dangerous then bio magnification it is nothing but now if we say the food chain suppose we have we are using pesticides or fertilizers so we are using it for plants so the plant from plants they are getting accumulated in the plant from plant it is uh, transferred to the primary consumer so now for example a man is eating both primary consumer and tree or a plant now he is getting he is suppose secondary consumer he is getting high amount of toxin from both primary consumer and plants so that means this is a magnification so the amount of toxin is getting accumulated more and more at each tropic level therefore it can cause disease or death finally it can also cause the extinction of species because of this toxin some species may also become extinct okay so these are the various problems of the ecosystem okay so do you have any doubts no no okay so we will continue with the next topic in the next classes okay thank you hari
بحده کم هم مثلا चलो लीव कर देंगे नहीं आते कोई भी